video, we are going to get booky. I'm sharing reviews of books that I read in the year 2023. If you like a good review on what books to purchase or maybe not to purchase, or even to rent from the library, then stay tuned to this video. If you are someone that wants to get back into reading, I will share some tips on how I got back into the habit of reading after taking off literally probably a decade of reading, most especially fiction books, and how much joy they have just brought back into my life these past couple years since just reintroducing and getting back into the habit of reading good literature. I am so excited to share some reviews of books that I read this year. This is not all inclusive. I think we all will rent from the library. We loan books from friends. Sometimes I'm reading them digitally and honestly just did not keep a running list of books that I was reading. And so I did my best to read go inside the back of my brain and remember the books that I read. So this year I will be keeping track so I can give you a full review of the books that I'm going to read in 2024. If you have books already picked out, you're kind of a bookie too, and you've made your list of the books that you want to read in 2024, I would love to know some of your favorite books because I am definitely trying to read more than I did even the previous year and I want some good books. So maybe give me like your top five books that you think I should read and we can compare a list and it will be fun and we'll just see what other books are out there to be read and to be given our valuable time. So I will have a few nonfiction books that I will share about at the end, but the majority of the books in today's book review will be fiction. So the first book is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. I really liked this book. I would give it like an eight out of 10. I would recommend this to other people. Fairy tale fiction. And so there are some strange creatures, but I think Neil Gaiman does a really good job describing his unique creatures and creating plot. I've enjoyed his books. I'm going to be reading another one of his books this year. And it's about a young boy that, well, it's actually an older boy and he goes back. So I'm not, I don't want to give it away, but I would recommend this one, Neil Gaiman. Let me know if you've read Neil Gaiman and maybe your favorite book by him. So our next book is Little Women. This is a classic. This was not the first time that I have read Little Women absolutely delight. I just love this book so much. Not just Joe, but all four sisters. Everything they go through, the character development. If you've never read this book, I would say that Louisa May Alcott, it is a slower, it's more of a high, more higher literature, literary, I guess you could say. And so it can be a little slower to read through than your typical modern day fiction. But I think that it gives you an opportunity to really get to know the characters and everything that they go through and overcome. So Little Women, uh, 10 out of 10, friends. <laughs> Louisa May Alcott's classic, classic book. This is like my whole Jane Austen collection. I read, I've read all of Jane Austen's books multiple times, but this year I read Mansfield Park and I actually didn't read it. I, this was the, this was one book that I listened to on audio and the voice that I heard was like a British voice. It was so delightful. And because I had previously read the book, I actually really enjoyed listening to the audio. And I've never, I think, listened to audio and then read the book. You definitely get a different perspective when you're listening to it versus reading it. I think there's the pros and cons of both. Mansfield Park is pretty intense to read. Any of Jane Austen books, if you've not done a lot of reading, I think can be a little more intense. There are books that I cannot really read very well in the evening, so I like to read them like in the afternoon. But I love Mansfield Park. I actually think it's quite funny. There's a lot of humor in it. Of course, Jane Austen is the master in my personal opinion, she is like the best at really building in, um, building on characters, the internal dialogue that they have kind of shaping that. So I think it gives you a chance to kind of just delight in the personality of the people. I love Jane Austen and I really enjoyed Mansfield Park rereading that happy ending. It ends perfectly. It has, it has the best ending. And I reread the golden, golden compass series. This is by Philip Pullman, who's a modern day fictional author. It is fantasy. He is a secular author. And I reread these after I had a miscarriage and I was just spending a lot of time reflecting and just to myself. And so I powered through these books in almost a week, actually. 
maybe two weeks, it, but it was quick. I've read these before. I actually read them in college. They are peculiar books. I think that they're really, really good literature. If you like fantasy, if you like J.R.R. Tolkien, C.S. Lewis, I think you would really like these. They are not as good. I have talked to friends about the ending um, and just my opinion on it because Philip Pullman is an atheist. I find that the ending does not give you that same satisfaction that you get in some other fairy tales. I think it's because it doesn't end with like what I think is a happy ending. It ends with the opposite. Basically the world is flip flopped. So like God and angels are evil and our, our own will is like power and good. And so they're definitely more for adults. I would never let my little children read these because you need to have like the right perspective. Give them a try. That's all I'm going to say. They're intense. They're very interesting. And I think they'll just give you something to kind of mull over and think about. But if you're in a fantasy, I would recommend this series. The next book is The Death of Ivan Illich by Leo Tolstoy. Now, I have never read Tolstoy before, and I'm really hoping to read War and Peace this year, if I can manage that. And if you've read that before, let me know. But The Death of Ivan Illich was a book that I think I will never forget. And Leo Tolstoy, from my understanding from the foreword of this copy, which I really loved the foreword, it was by Ronald Blythe. And he kind of gave an introduction on Leo Tolstoy as an author, which I found very helpful. And I don't know much about the author. And so understanding his books and how he always was talking about life and death and just really mulling and understanding the purpose of life in itself. And so the death of Ivan Illich goes through the life of Ivan and all the way up to his death. It is sad in many ways, but it's sad, but it helps you reflect upon your own life, the purpose of your life, how you're using your time, what aspirations you are moving towards and working towards. Do they matter? what really matters in life. With being a fictional book, I think it will help you mull over the big questions in life in a very, very short, tiny little story. It is one that had my mind going for weeks, just thinking and thinking about what this book meant. So I would recommend it. We read it in our book club uh, that I'm part of, and it was a short read, but a very powerful read. A little lighter note, <laughs> these three books, um, are much, much lighter read compared to some of the ones that I have been talking about. So if you're looking for something that you can read in the evening, I read all of these in the evening, half asleep. <laughs> something that is light enough where if you've had a long day, you were stressed out, um, it's just been crazy, but you still want to disengage from your phone and read something that is entertaining, but not too heavy, then I would recommend these. They will pull you in. They are not high any sort of really amazing, incredible writing per se, but they are entertaining. And I think that all of them pull you right in. And so one of them, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think it was the, yeah, the gold digger. I ended up staying up all night till like 2 a.m. because I had to know what happened. So I own three of them. I guess it's a larger series called The True Colors. So I have gotten these mostly, I think, I think all of them are from thriftbooks.com. So this is the Yellow Lantern. The Green Dress was the first book that I read and then The Gold Digger. These are written by different art authors. Two of the ones that I read were by this Liz Tolsma. And then another one was read, written by Angie Dickens. I would consider these like a Christian, just by the fact that there's no language. There's nothing sexual in them. I think the authors, I think, are Christian. They are all based on thriller murders, true stories, which was part of the reason that they kept me so engaged in the books. But all three of these are like based on true crime. The Gold Digger is about like these people that were digging in graves. Um, or no, she was, somebody was killing a bunch of people to get money. 
And then the yellow lantern was one about digging graves and then the green dress. Wow. It's about a green dress that was being made. So I would recommend these. I thought they were really good. I would loan these out to friends. If you're watching this video and you want to loan these books, I would definitely loan these out. I don't think they're ones you have to purchase. I got them from thrift books just because I get so many books from thrift books. I get like free books all the time. Definitely one you could rent or just listen to, or I'm sorry, you could loan on your phone. Next book that I'm reviewing is House by Frank Peretti. Again, another book that I read in high school came to revisit because of a book club. This is such a creepy book. <laughs> and I know some of the girls that also read it with me are like, no, it's not creepy. But I, um, some horror type thriller books are kind of just strange to me. Very good. I like Frank Peretti. He, if you've never heard of him, Frank Peretti writes like spiritual warfare. So he has books, House, monster uh piercing the darkness i can't even think of all the books that i've read of frank Peretti, but this one's also by oh yeah ted decker as well so this has to do with people that are all stuck in a house they're basically faced with their own sin themselves and they have to kind of come to grasp of with that admit their sin admit their like selfishness to escape the house and so it's the journey with all of them and it's just really entertaining it's a good book it's it's a good book i would give it like a seven out of ten and if you've never read frank pretty start with like piercing the darkness this present darkness those are really good books and i think you would enjoy them next one is new york times bestseller laura dave and i actually got another one of her books for this year this one is called the last thing he told me i would say that her writing is really good i thought it was easy to read it moved really really smoothly got through it um as far as like modern fiction goes the it is in like a few days. So the whole book is just a few days. And so I felt like I had a lot of character development and got to know the characters very quickly, even though the story was very short per se. The ending is very realistic at like what would happen in real life. And so I think that that can actually be kind of a letdown because it's not that fairy tale ending that all of us so much desire, but it was good. It was a good, I, I would give it like a six out of 10. The last thing he told me, I thought it was a good book. So I have three more fiction books for you. This one was called Beautiful Souls. Pick this up at a library sale. This was by uh, R. Clifton Spargo. And he's not like some famous author. This is like his one hit wonder. My sister grabbed it for me because she met the author. He was at our college that we went to and she got her book signed. And it's about Zelda and Scott Fitzgerald and like the end of their love romance. And I actually thought it was really good. It has some things in it that you may need to skip over because it is a romance. Um, they were a married couple. I think it's it's sad. It gives you an open look at what popular people, authors, celebrities, what they go through, pressures they go through, uh, struggles that they have, and how empty a life can really be. Even though you could have you know the best time, best selling book like Scott Fitzgerald, a best selling author, or you have all the money in the world. She was like a Southern belle and how still your life can be empty. And I think that that is just a good reminder of where we should find our hope and happiness. And unfortunately, Zelda and Scott did not make it um, as a couple together. And it's kind of just shows you the shallowness of that life. But it was a really good book. And I thought it was just very interesting. I had never read much about Scott Fitzgerald or know, knew much about him. So I thought it was an interesting read. I think they have another one hit wonder here. This is the Scarlet Pippernell. Now the Scarlet Pippernell was a movie that I watched when I was a teenager. We used to love it. We rented it all the time from the library back when we rented videos. I had never read the book. So this is the Scarlet Pippernell. It was super good. I really, really enjoyed it. I would like to read a couple more of her books that she has written. But I had I have heard that this author, this was like her one good book and the other ones are like so so. But apparently the Scarlet Pimpernel does have some sequels and other stories written about him. So if you've never heard of the Scarlet Pimpernel, it is based during the 
French Revolution, and he is an Englishman that is trying to help noblemen from France escape uh, with their heads. <laughs> and so, and it's all about his little adventures and has some romance in it. And it is just a really good book. And the movie is also really, really well done um, as well. Last fictional book that I'm going to share with you in this book review is The Magnolia Palace. I really enjoyed this book a lot. I have never heard of this author before. It is Fiona Davis, and I would definitely give another one of her books a go. She's another New York Times bestseller, kind of like Laura Dave, uh, but I think better <laughs> in my opinion. So this is like two stories going back and forth between each other, two women that lo and behold, their lives are actually going to cross and just, it's a, it's a mystery. It is actually a murder mystery. Really well done. Totally threw me for a curve at the end. I think if you cannot guess the ending, then it's an actual mystery, whether it's a book or a movie. And there's not many like that. And so this was one that kept me guessing until the very end. In fact, after I read it, I wanted to read it again, just to see if I could pick up on any clue that may have been in the book that could have given it away. However, I have not reread it because, you know, such is life, you go on to the next book. But this one is one that I could see in like a decade, I would read it again, especially for like modern it's an author that is, you know, still living and it was really good. So this one I have recommended to friends. I would say read it. That was really good. It was entertaining. 10 out of 10 for an easy read, light fiction for your like evening mental wind down. I would definitely recommend this book. Three nonfiction books to share with each of you that I have read. And I have a lot more nonfiction that I have read or... I am like halfway done. <laughs> I have a lot of halfway done nonfiction books and I need to wrap up. Some of them I just like get what I need from them and then I never like finish them. And I just think that's how nonfiction goes sometimes. But all three of these I did finish and they were so, so, they were very, very good. The first one we have is Mere Motherhood, which was by Cindy Rollins. This is a book that is a autobiography of Cindy Rollins and just her life. And she has written this kind of, giving you a portrait of what sanctification looks like for a mom. And I read this in, a, it was like a week. So very, very powerful, helping us just realize what the journey of motherhood looks. And she just, she makes you laugh. Like I laughed, I cried. Her motherhood journey was so real. She didn't, I feel like sugarcoat anything. She meets you right exactly where you are at. And in her admitting all the hard things, it makes you just feel better about knowing that you are going through the things that so many other moms have gone through as well. And it's going to be okay. And that is just part of our journey of motherhood. And this, we just need to lean into Christ and trust him in this process. The second one was Consider This. This was written by Karen Glass, which is a book that talks about Charlotte Mason and the classical tradition. I am a Charlotte Mason homeschool mom. Do I think that they are similar? Um, it's debatable. I have not yet decided. I think that the Charlotte Mason philosophy is crystal clear. I'm working on my second one of her volumes. And so I don't necessarily think it holds the classical tradition. I think that we do read a lot of classical books and we do learn, uh, we are recommended to learn Latin and those kind of things. But I think the fundamental principles are slightly different, but it was a really interesting read. And I do love that both philosophies do focus on rich literature, but beyond that, I think that they have some pretty different, different uh, perspectives. So, however, this one was also by Karen Glass. This is called In Vital Harmony, and this would be my top book for someone that is looking to look, uh, to try or learn more about the Charlotte Mason homeschool method. She takes the 20 principles of Charlotte Mason. She breaks them down in a kind of clear, modern mind. And so without having to go through all six volumes of Charlotte Mason, although I would highly recommend those still, you can read this and get a good grasp of what the Charlotte Mason method is. And so I do recommend this. This is uh, one that I think is an easy read compared to the volumes, uh, definitely digestible. And so 
when people have asked me about Charlotte Mason, I tell them, listen or read in Vital Harmony, rent it, and you will get a good idea of what the philosophy is of Charlotte Mason, because it's not about choosing a curriculum. It's understanding what her goal and purpose was in education. And I think of this book does a really, really good job in helping you understand that easily. So that is my short but not so short book review list of the books some of the books that I read in 2023. If you have read any of these books, I would love to hear your review on them down below and share with me something that you're going to read this coming year. And I will be sure to do more book reviews if you liked this video. So if you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below and I will see you next time. Bye.